Let's take a look at the 15 steps of blood flow through the heart. Now don't try and confuse this with the cardiac cycle. You're going to see when you look at the cardiac cycle and how all these structures work together, a lot of these pieces and parts you see in these 15 steps work together at the same time. But that's not what we're looking at right here. If you could actually watch one drop of blood going through the heart, this shows you which structure you're going to see one after another. So when you look at blood flow going through the heart, start with the three inflows into the right side of the heart. If you look at these three inflows, you've got the superior vena cava. This returns all blood to the heart from anywhere above the heart. Inferior vena cava returns all blood from below the heart and then the coronary sinus from the cardiac muscle itself. So that is the entire body returning all blood into that right atrium. If you look inside the right atrium, there should be three holes for those three structures there. Once blood leaves this right atrium, it's got to go through the tricuspid valve. You want to call that right atrioventricular valve? Same thing. After this, you'll be down inside of the right ventricle. This big powerful pump here pushes blood up through the pulmonary semilunar valve. That sends it up to the pulmonary trunk. You get to the top of the pulmonary trunk and it's going to split left and right into pulmonary arteries. Remember, arteries always take blood away from the heart. That's exactly what it's doing, taking this blood away from the heart into the lungs. So this is your pulmonary circulation. Remember that the heart is two pumps. The right one is all about pumping blood out of the body into the lungs. So that's why this is pulmonary circulation. Soon as that blood circulates through those lungs, it's going to come right back towards the heart through pulmonary veins. Again, arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins always bring it back towards it. So when that right pump of the heart pumps blood to the lungs, it circulates through all those pulmonary capillaries, swaps those gases, and then that blood comes right back to the left side of the heart. You're going to look inside the left atrium in pictures and see four holes inside of it. That's the four pulmonary veins leading into that left atrium. If blood's going to leave that left atrium, it's got to get down through the bicuspid, also called the mitral valve also called the left atrium ventricular. Once blood passes through it, it'll be down in the left ventricle. Here's your biggest, most powerful pump of the heart by far. When that left ventricle contracts, it's going to push blood through that aortic semilunar valve, through the aorta, which is your very first artery, out to the entire body, right? From the top of your head to the tip of your toes, and then of course it's going to come right back again to step one, right back to the right side of the heart. But this all here is your systemic circulation because this is pumping blood out to all the body systems and all the structures in it. So here's a good little picture showing a lot of this superficial anatomy of the heart, at least the anterior part right here. But look at this picture here. Look at our 15 steps. Go back to step one. Here's your superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Then there should be a third hole in here called the coronary sinus. Again, that's the entire body returning its blood into this right atrium. Next, there's your tricuspid, down to the right ventricle, through the pulmonary semilunar valve, up the pulmonary trunk, and again, it splits into pulmonary arteries. Then it's going to circulate through the lungs, right, each of those. Then it's going to come right back towards the left side of the heart through pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Leaving the left atrium, right here you have the bicuspid, the mitral left atrioventricular valve, down to the left ventricle. From there, through the aortic semilunar valve, through the aorta, which splits off into many arteries going to all the body, and then it's going to come right back to the right side again. Again, your right pump is pumping blood out of the body into the lungs. Left pump is pumping it out of the lungs into the body. So these two pumps are always working together. You don't want either one of these pumps to fail, but think about if one were to fail, which one it would most likely be. Look at your right pump, what it does. It pumps blood to your lungs. That's not very far from the heart, so it doesn't need to generate a lot of pressure. Left ventricle has to pump blood from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. That's a whole lot further. This left pump has to generate far more pressure. There is way more muscle in this left ventricle than that right one. They actually drew this to scale. You'd see much more muscle inside this left ventricle. 
But since that left ventricle has to generate more pressure, it's under a lot more stress. It's using up a lot more oxygen and other nutrients. So when somebody has a heart attack, it's usually in the left pump. It's usually this left ventricle that has some sort of problem. Lots of things could cause that. But think about what would happen if somebody had a heart attack. They had a myocardial infarction. That literally means heart muscle died. And if you lose some of the muscle in this left pump, it's going to be weaker than what it was before. Now think about the consequences of that. Your right pump wasn't affected. It's pumping blood to the lungs. But now the left pump that pumps that blood out of the lungs is weak. And if it can't keep up, blood starts to accumulate in the lungs. Fluid accumulates in the lungs, and that inhibits the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's one thing that can cause left side congestive heart failure. But let's say somebody had, had a heart attack over here in this right pump. It can definitely happen. Well, think about what would happen if this left pump now is strong, but now the right one's weak. So we got the opposite scenario. If the left one is strong and is pushing it out to the body, and the right one is weak and can't pump it out, blood's going to start to backflow everywhere else in the body except the lungs. But left side congestive heart failure leads to right, right will eventually lead to left, and so on down the line. A good picture there for showing the 15 steps of blood flow through the heart.